is our MC, Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. Two minutes, nine seconds of round number one. Our referee, Michael Alexander, waves off the contest as the red corner was in no position to continue. Therefore, your winner, and still undefeated, Willie the Hurricane Hutchinson. Some might say it was predictable. Well, maybe it was, but the manner of it was impressive. Another dynamic performance for the young Scott, Willie Hutchinson. Certainly blew in here gale force, didn't he, tonight? Willie Hutchinson and David, the five extra pounds above the super middleweight limit were put to rather good use there, weren't they? He used every single ounce of those. He, he was just so, so in control from the very first round. He had an awkward guy, the guy had long arms, six foot three, bounced around, turned south orthodox. But you could see once Willie started letting his hands go, fight was going one way and going one way very, very quickly. I thought it was optimistic to have this uh, scheduled as a, a ten-round bout. It was never going to go that long once Willie found his range and once he uh, started digging his, digging his heels in and letting his shots go. You know, he, um, Thomas was uh, so overmatched, it was unbelievable. He has had to wait quite some time to get back in action, hasn't he? And I'm afraid Ben Thomas rather felt the consequences yeah, he of was. that. He was. It can happen. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time there. Willie, obviously, had been training hard. Ingle's been pushing him in the gym, as he does with his fighters, making sure he's in tip-top shape. And um, he wanted to show some of that. He wanted to come out here and make a, make a display in his first 10-round fight. He was willing to start fast. He was willing to let his hands go because he had confidence in his punch punch, uh, punch output and the fact that he had 10 rounds of that type of work in him. And yep. um, if, if, if Thomas was durable enough to deal with that, he'd have been there for the full 12 rounds, letting them shots go. I think at this stage, you know, that's, that's ideal in the sense that this was a, a little bit like Sam Maxwell, actually, tonight. This was an opportunity for Hutchinson to send out a message to the rest in the division. And we know that uh, Richards is meant to, to defend, isn't he, against Umar Sadiq quite yeah. shortly. But, you know, Willie Hutchinson needs to be knocking on that door. And, and this probably will... will be effective think, in that I, way. I think he's a little way off from that. Maybe not in ability-wise, but in, in experience-wise. He hasn't fought anyone remotely in that level yet. Every time he's been stepped up, as he was here, he just blasts through people. So I think a few more fights in the sort of fringe British-level fighters, you know, guys who have been fought for titles, maybe gone the distance and lost maybe for British titles. Jump in with these guys. If he can get similar results with those guys as he is here, then, you know, he's, on, he's knocking on the door. Yeah, that's interesting. But the problem is, David, you know, when you've had the, the best part of a year off in force, yeah. you want to get on with it, don't you? you? Do. And if, you've, if you are, for example, Dominic Ingle, and you know what you're working with every day, it becomes quite difficult to say, no, hang on, you're not ready, when every day you're showing that you are ready. Yeah, he's been sparring Richard, so he, he knows how good he is. You know, I've seen him behind closed doors in a gym with, with good level fighters, European level fighters. He handles himself well. The amateur pedigree that he's got really shines through. And um, I just want to see, I want to see him in there against someone who's really coming to win with a, with a good record themselves. Because I think the better his opposition, the better he will perform.